This video runs through some of the aspects of merit trick. The skills are going to be basically the same as it achieved. Find a side, find an angle, use Pythagoras. The differences are there might be multiple steps. We may need to add a line or lines to generate right angle triangles. We may need to mix in a little bit of geometry. There may be bearings and it might be 3D. For this video we're only going to concentrate on the first three. So number one, two or three step problems. Two things to keep in mind. First we can only do trigonometry on right angle triangles and secondly we need two pieces of information in a right angle triangle to start. So I'm going to show you how we might do that in practice thinking through those two things. Right angle triangle two pieces of information. So here's a reasonably difficult merit question. We are asked to find the value of theta, an angle in the upper triangle. That green triangle cannot be solved, at least not directly, because it's not right angled. So we need to work on some other triangle first to get us there. The obvious place to look is the bottom triangle. But the bottom triangle only has one piece of information. We know the base is 12, but we have no other pieces of information about it. So it can't be that. Instead, we have to look at the whole triangle combined, taking out the middle line, and then we see that we have two pieces of information for that, the base of 12, the hypotenuse of 18, and we can solve for that triangle. So let's do so. I find the angle inverse cos gives me an angle of 48.19 short side Pythagoras and e squared minus 12 squared square rooted is 13.42 so I have solved for the larger triangle taking that back I have that this distance is 13.42 and so I can quickly calculate that the purple triangle's height must be 7.42 because this length and this length add to the 13.42. That gives us two pieces of information for the purple triangle and I can solve its angle here in green inverse tan opposite over adjacent opposite over adjacent 31.73. That allows me to now solve for theta. I take the red angle calculated at 48.19 the green angle calculated at 31.73, subtract them and the difference is theta 16.46. Quite a lot of steps, but at each step I thought, is there a right angle triangle? Do I have two pieces of information? The next thing we might have to do is add lines. So we're adding lines but we're adding lines to convert into right angle triangles and rectangles only. And we need those right angle triangles to have two pieces of information. There may be some geometry thrown in depending on how hard the question is. So let's have a look at a very, very standard problem. Trapezium. When we look at that, we're asked to find the length D. We look at it and see there are no right angle triangles in a trapezium so we can put a line across. That line's fine and leaves us a right angle triangle here 14 and 12 but it doesn't help us because it leaves a non right angle triangle. Doing it the other way, no better, right angle triangle at the bottom, non right angle triangle at the top. We just have to know through practice that this is how you divide a trapezium, a rectangle and a right angle triangle. So we have the upper right angle triangle we can solve and to do that we transfer across the side lengths of a rectangle because we know opposite sides of a rectangle are equal and that entitles, allows me rather to calculate this length at 14 and this length was 5 so there must be 7 left over from the original 12. That is, it was 12. It's divided into 5 and 7. Now I have two pieces of information, a 
about the upper triangle 14 and 7 are lengths and easy Pythagoras once I've done that and I calculate D is 15.65 sometimes we might have to chuck in a bit of geometry so here's another fairly standard question I still have to divide it with my horizontal line because it's the only way to convert into rectangles and right angle triangles that divides the 112 into two unequal portions but because it's a rectangle I know the bottom part is 90 degrees so the top part is 22 degrees so there we have once I transfer this length across to there a right angle triangle with two pieces of information 22 degrees 14 length I can solve the rest of it and 14 divided by cos of 22 is 15.1 fairly standard if we take out a 90 degrees then what's left over must be what remains inside the triangle sometimes the shapes get quite complex so this one is getting on towards excellence level but is nonetheless dealt with in exactly the same way I still have to box this out so that it has right angle triangles and rectangles I could put line from there to there diagonally across it but there'd be no right angle triangles so that's fairly useless instead I box it out into three pieces a rectangle and two right angle triangles from there I just have to concentrate on which parts I can work with and which parts I can't where do I start so I look and I find a triangle for which I have two pieces of information two pieces of information not that one I don't have anything about that because I have an unknown length x and a part of it is 18 so we obviously can't work with that and I'm going to need the 18 later when I come to that triangle instead I have to work with the bottom one because I have a side length and an angle that entitles me to calculate the other side lengths of it which I do and having done that I can use my knowledge of rectangles to transfer pieces of information across the 9.08 from this triangle becomes there and 9.08 means that what's left over up there must be 8.92 so I now have one piece of information for my top triangle I can also transfer this piece of information across here which tells me that having taken away from 30 I'm left with 12.18 and then I transfer that across the rectangle to the bottom of my upper triangle and finally I have what I need two pieces of information for my triangle which I can solve using Pythagoras you get x is 15.1 it's a slow procedure but keep in mind two pieces of information right angle triangles and rectangles ordinary triangles can always be divided but there's some special cases if we have an isosceles triangle we divide it down the middle now this is a fairly standard and very easy merit question and one that you just have to have memorized to how you deal with it once we've dealt with it down the middle we have two equal identical right angle triangles which means that the degrees at the top and the length at the base can be halved the 92 is split into two 46's the 14 is split into two 7's scaling triangles can also be divided but they're not divided down the middle because the side lengths aren't the same so we can't have either the angle or the base no matter how tempting with the scaling triangle we have to use other methods so we divide our triangle and we see we have two pieces of information for this triangle two pieces of information 
means we can solve it. I'm not going to do that now, but the method is still the same. We can calculate this length and this length and work across to the other triangle. Generally, you'd split a scaling triangle down the longest side. Doesn't matter which way the triangle is. So in this case, we'd split it 90 degrees to the long side, leaving us two pieces of information and we know we can solve from there. The 100 doesn't split into 50, we're going to need that later. If we split it vertically, then we don't have the right amount of information. For the right angle triangle down here we can solve, but for the upper part it's not a right angle so it's no use to us at all. Very occasionally they ask harder questions. If we split this triangle at 90 degrees to the base, we don't have any lengths because we don't know where the 55 splits and we don't have any angles because we don't know where the 100 splits, we are left with one piece of information so that doesn't work. In those cases we actually have to push the lines outside and then we have two right angle triangles, the purple one and the combined blue and purple one. That outside one has a length and an angle so we will be able to solve it. And in fact that length is there and from that length we can then use a bit of geometry this one's 100, so when we move it across, the other one on the line must be 80, and then we have a right angle triangle with P2C pieces of information, and we can solve it using sin 80 degrees. Bearings are going to be dealt with elsewhere because they are mostly excellence, likewise 3D. So, there's a lot to remember there, but in general you can work it through if you keep to these key points. We need right angle triangles, shapes need to be divided into rectangles and right angle triangles. To start with we need a right angle triangle with two pieces of information and we may need to use some geometry, angles on a line, alternate and even just simple subtraction. Those four points will get you through most merit trigonometry questions.